Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Here at our homestead, we've got a pretty sweet solar power system which runs off-grid and runs everything in our house. We have 6,000 watts of panels on the roof and we have a 10 kilowatt hour battery that gets us through the majority of rainy days and certainly of evenings. That is a whole house system where one system runs the entire house. And despite the fact that that's how I set my house up here, I frequently advocate here on my channel that that is not the best way to do things from an emergency preparedness standpoint. And that's what I want to talk about in this video, a better way to set up your house to be on solar that is not one full whole house system. And that's where this unit here comes in. This is a smaller system. It has two kilowatt hours of battery storage on the inside of the unit, which makes it one fifth of the size of my whole house system. But it's really a critical part of my system and I plan on getting more of these. And the reason is if you have one whole house system, if anything in that system goes down, your whole house, surprise, surprise, goes down. You don't have power unless you have the ability to flip back to the grid, which here we do. But if you don't have that ability, say it's during a blackout, it's during a snowstorm, it's during an EMP event or something like that. If you have anything go wrong with that whole house system, your entire house is down. If you were to set up your house excluding a whole house system and just build it out of a number of these systems, there's a huge advantage there. Number one, the cost of getting into a system like this is much, much lower. The whole house system that I got from my place, I built it myself, but I purchased all the parts and it was about $20,000 to do the entire house. A system like this is far less expensive, less capable, but way less expensive. So immediately there's a lower cost of entry to get into a system like this. And you don't have to make your entire house be off grid powered by the sun or some other renewable all at once. You can do it piecemeal. You can do it step by step. And as soon as you install one of these systems, you're instantly going to be saving money on your electric bill. You're instantly going to create a situation where that part of your house, whatever this is running, is going to have that kind of bulletproof protection from blackouts. And I would highly recommend starting in this way where you start with one of these units. This is made by All Powers. I chose uh, this All Power uh, system because, well, actually they approached me and they asked me if I wanted to test it out. And uh, I, I said, sure, yeah, I, I'll test out your system. And I've used a number of these in the past. And, you know, to be honest, uh, you know, every, every company is going to tell you that their unit is the best. Uh, but I don't look at it that way. I think they're all pretty Pretty much the same. I'm sure that there are some terrible companies out there. All Powers does not seem to be one of them. This unit works really, really well. But, you know, all the major players in this arena, All Powers included, you know, they all make decent stuff and it does what it says it's going to do. You put power into the unit, the power comes out. There are some little bells and whistles here and there, uh, which you can get into, but I, those personally don't really appeal to me that much. Like you can connect this to your phone and kind of run it through an app and, you know, you can monitor and, I guess that's great, but the, when solar electric equipment, when like off-grid equipment for your house is doing what it's supposed to be doing, it, I think, should be doing it in a way where you kind of just can forget that it's even there. You know, you plug it in, you get it set up, and then years go by, and you know, you don't really have to interact with it at all. And this uh, system here is proving to work along those lines. What it has is, like I mentioned, two kilowatt hours of battery storage on the inside. And I find that that is enough to run my refrigerator and a deep freezer for about a day. I've got like a full size, you know, regular refrigerator and a pretty big uh, uh, deep uh, uh, freeze cooler. And uh, I can run those for about a day. That's not what I tend to do with this though. What I do with this is that I'm using this as additional storage for my whole house system. My whole house system has 10 kilowatt hours of batteries in it. And by adding this in, it's not directly stabbed into the rest of the system, but it's taking two kilowatt hours of burden off of the system every single night. So what I've got running into this, like I said, is my refrigerator and my cooler. And I chose those two things because those are consistent loads and they're kind of the same, uh, all the time. In the summer, I guess the refrigerator probably runs a little bit more because it might get a little bit warm in the house. Certainly if I'm going in and out of it, it runs a little bit more, but generally those are kind of consistent uh, loads. So I put both of those in here and now every single night, this system just 
runs those items. And what that does is it allows me to be a little bit less concerned about where the battery level is on my whole house system so that I can let it go a little bit lower knowing that my whole house system is gonna have no trouble getting through the night because a lot of the burden that was on that system during the nighttime is now being taken over by this system. And what I do with this is I charge this up with the extra capacity that I have from my 6,000 watts of solar panels that you know, is use it or lose it during the day. And that's oftentimes the case. When you have a solar electric system, you wanna have plenty of pa panels on your roof. So even if it's overcast, you're generating the power that you need. But on sunny days, you've got way more power than you could ever use. And wherever you can kind of store that power away, that's a way of capturing that and actually using it for something. So for about two hours per day, this thing charges up when it's around uh, noontime and we've got plenty of power. This thing will charge up and then it just runs all the rest of the day and it carries us through the night. I have it so that it gets unplugged in the evening uh, with a little timer that's uh, uh, set into this power strip here. So this thing is being powered uh, right now from the grid. Actually, it's uh, recharging right now. We're at 93% and it's filling it up at about 580 uh, or, or so watts, uh, it, that, that's the rate that it's filling it up at. This unit can be filled at a variety of different speeds. Their standard speed is around a thousand watts that you'll push the power into there. Uh, I have it set at what's called a mute, uh, like a quiet setting where it only pushes it in at under 600 watts. And I believe there's a more aggressive setting that you can pump power into this that is like, I, th I think it's like, like 1500 watts or something like that. The reason that I have this set on the lowest setting is because I don't wanna to have to think about any of this stuff. I wanna set this thing up and forget about it. And the way that it operates right now is that it, it gets turned on, I think somewhere around like 9.30 in the morning, when we generally have plenty of sun, it'll get turned on, it'll start filling up. Now on a day like today, it's bright and sunny outside. We get way more power than we uh, you know, know what to do with. I could have this set at that 1500 watt uh, setting and have it really fill up really fast. But there's gonna be some days when it's kind of cloudy outside. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna wanna be ripping power out of my system for the house where maybe I don't have a ton of extra power. So I've got this constantly set up at the trickle setting. So just throughout the day, it'll fill up. This should be finished up within like an hour or so. And then it's going to be completely full and just kind of waiting uh, to run in the evening and it will take care of all of my refrigeration. I'll talk just a little bit about this all powers unit in particular. And again, there's all sorts of makers of these products and anyone where you're buying it from a reputable company, I, I've had a lot of these kind of things and they're all fine. Power goes in, you get power out. And all powers certainly seems to be, uh, you know, in with that group. I've had it for a while now and it's, it's been working fabulously. Power goes in, power comes out, and I just don't even have to think about it. But there are some bells and whistles of different models. I'll talk about some of the bells and whistles on this, most of which I don't tend to use, uh, but, but uh, you know, it, for different people's uh, circumstances, different people's uh, situations, some of these might be of use. Uh, there are five AC outlets across the front. Uh, all of these are 110 power. There's one of these large circular ones too, which got me thinking that this was a 220 outlet, um, but uh, that, that's also a one, uh, 110 outlet. I, that was actually a learning experience for me. I, I thought that those, uh, those round outlets were always uh, 220, but apparently sometimes you'll use that style of plug, but uh, with a 10, 110 uh, device. So you get five uh, 110 uh, eight alternating current uh, outlets here. There's a, a number of USB outlets uh, here. Also some uh, just regular DC 12 volt uh, outlets going uh, out on this side. Uh, you can put power in either through AC, which is the way that I'm charging it now, where I just uh, you know dump the power in when it, during the day when I have plenty of it, and then the power uh, comes out at night when I you know want to take uh, some stress off of my system. But you can also put solar pan uh, panels in here. They've got a little uh, plug on the side, and I tested out a solar panel array that they uh, you know sell with their company. It was kind of neat. It's like a suitcase uh, sort of one. It's more the kind of thing that you would use for camping or an emergency. It's not the sort of thing that you would set up. Out, uh, you know full time because it's it's made out of polymers to make it so that you know it's safer it's not going to break and it's not as heavy for carrying around for for camping and stuff uh, but it would break down in the sun if you had it out for like months and months years year after year so uh, if you wanted to run this in a more permanent kind of way you would want to get some just regular old glass rack mount solar panels and you can dump those into here in that uh, you know amazing range of voltage all the way from 12 volts if you wanted to all the way up to 150 volts uh, you know if, if that was your desire but i really like the versatility of this i also like the versatility of the charging speeds in here one downside of that particular feature uh and this is just for me personally because this is I, this is how i roll is uh you have to use an 
an app through your phone to connect to this to get into those particular features to change, uh, to kind of throttle the charging uh, speed on here. And uh, you know, for I think the majority of people listening to this uh, video, you probably are like, well, what's the problem with that? That's great. Uh, and it is cool. You can it, you can monitor on your phone and you get all that information. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm always kind of like a button and lever kind of guy. And um, you know, like what, ha what happens if something happened to my phone or whatever? I like to have the physical buttons and levers and switches right on a unit. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm kind of in the minority uh, in, in that regard, so I can understand why they're not catering to me uh, you know, uh, on that. But uh, if you are a, a Luddite like me and, and you're like a switches and uh, buttons kind of person, uh, you know, that might be something that you, you, you know, might irk you a little. But, but even for me, I set it once and... Then I just I take the app off on my, my phone and you know I'm done with it. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are thinking about getting a unit like this, now is an excellent time to do so because, well, for two reasons. One, there is a glut of this stuff in the market right now. A lot of solar companies uh, you know, were uh, created and have recently sort of folded because I guess they kind of overestimated the market. And there's a lot of uh, surplus uh, stock in the, in the market at the moment. And that gives us an opportunity to get at a lower price. And on top of that, there are some tariffs that were voted into effect here in the United States. I don't know exactly when they come into effect, but it's pretty soon. And the tariffs are going to be slapping uh, extra costs onto units like this that have lithium ion, um, or lithium ion fast site batteries, or maybe lithium ion batteries as well. Also, solar panels are going to get hit with huge tariffs. I think they're somewhere between like 25 and 50 percent. So the prices on units like this are about to go really, really high. So we're at a time in the market where the prices have dipped and they're about to go up. This is the valley. This is where you want to uh, start getting these kind of things. I think I'm probably going to get at least another unit or two of these, and I'm going to scatter them around my house and connect them up to different systems in my house so that if my main house system ever went down, or if this system ever went down, or if another system ever went down, all the other units are in all likelihood still going to be functioning. So if you would take a situation where you would go from having zero power to having the majority of the power in your house still functioning. If you'd like to see a video about how I set this up so that this can run my refrigerator without me having to run a bunch of extension cord through my house from my refrigerator back to this unit, click down in the description below. I'm gonna have a special link to a, a video that not many too many people are gonna be interested in. So I'm gonna make it a special unlisted video, but it's gonna show you what I did in order to get this connected my, to my refrigerator, which is in a whole other room of the house without all those extension cords running everywhere. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.